All right, this video is for a chi-square test for independence. So earlier we learned about a chi-square test for goodness of fit, which dealt with one variable or one categorical variable and how well our data fit with that one variable. But now we're going to look at identifying independence between two variables. So first, to really understand this, we want to ask ourselves the question, what does independence between two variables mean? So um, I have a little example down here that we're going to use in today's video to explain this. And it's the idea of here we have two variables. We have gender, male versus female, that's two variables, or one variable with two categories and then we have another variable what's the color of a first toy chosen which we have four categories across this so now you see the two variables gender versus color of first toy and this data is trying to identify is is there a connection between um, gender and what color toy you choose well independence if you recall means that there is no association no association Okay, now what does that mean? It means that it doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter what color toy you choose, right? For example, if I'm a male, that doesn't make me any more likely to choose a red, blue, yellow, or green toy versus a female. Or if I choose a blue toy, that doesn't make me any more or less likely to be a male or a female. It's completely independent. These two variables have nothing to do with each other, no association. <coughs> So to really understand that, sometimes it's better to actually look about percentages, right? So let's just start with green, for example, right? 48 out of 236 kids chose the color, chose a, a green toy. That's about 20%, okay? Now, if we truly have independence, for, amongst the 116 males, we should also see 20% choose green. Of the 120 females, we should see 20% choose green. If we see that same 20% across the genders, then that's what's telling us that it really is no association, which means it's independent. Because that would show, hey, 20% of kids choose a green toy. 20% of females do, 20% of males do. Apparently, choosing a green toy has nothing to do with your gender. Your gender has nothing to do with choosing a green toy. And then I would repeat that self for each color, right? I could also look at this going across the genders as well. For example, 120 out of 236 kids in this survey, about 51% are female. So about 51% are female, which means 49% are male. So, if 51% of kids in this survey are female, then when I look at the green category, I should see 51% of them be male. So, of these 48, 51% should be female. And then again, 49% should be male male. Across yellow, in that yellow category, I should see 51% female, 49% male. In the blue, I should see 51% female, 49% male. In the red, I should see 51% female, 49% male. Again, if I see those same percentages across the board, what that tells me is that it, once again, there's no association. Gender, color, they don't impact each other at all. If I choose red, I'm not more likely to be a male or female. If I'm a female, I'm not more likely to choose red or blue or yellow or green. It's the same across the board. And this is what we mean by independence, right? So what we want to essentially do here is check our data. Do we have independence? Now, first and foremost, in the world we live in, this is just a sample. So don't ever expect the data to match up perfectly to the tenth decimal point, okay? And that's the point of why we're doing this test, is we're saying, okay, our data is not perfect, but is it is it just is it close enough that you know there is no association or is one of the categories or two or three of them so far off that maybe there really is an association between a color and gender and that's what the whole point of a chi-square test will do for us all right so let's go actually go through the steps now step one are the hypotheses so in any test you have to do these null and alternative hypotheses so in a chi-square test this is all words no numbers so um, the null is that um, there is independence between gender and color of toy. 
Now, if you want, you could also write this as there is no association between gender and color of toy, right? But that's what independence means. So we could just say independence. So basically the null is that, no, there's no connection. If I'm a guy, I'm not more likely to choose a blue toy or red toy, yellow toy. If I choose a green toy, I'm not more likely to be a male or a female. It's, there is no, there's no association. It's truly independent, right? That's the null. The alternative is that um, there is not independence. between, and again, as you write this, make sure that you contain that context. Don't just say independent versus not independent. You got to make sure you have that context. So there's not independence between gender and color of toy, which um, we could also say, maybe it actually would make more sense to say that there is an association, right? There is an association between these two variables. You don't have to mention any particular color or gender by name. It's just the idea that these two variables, gender and color of the toy, do have some connection. Like maybe blue toys are more liked by guys. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, so now we're on to the conditions. These same three conditions should sound familiar. Condition number one is that it must be a random sample because we don't want any bias to creep in here. And if for us to truly have a good sample, it does need to be free of bias. Number two is our sample does have to be under, or I guess our sample size. So sample is under 10% of the population. And we've talked long enough about that condition to know why it's important. And the third condition is that you do need um, five or more expected counts in each category. Five or more expected counts in each category. Now I'm going to write this, but we actually can't check this off until we actually do our expected. Um, now, most kids look at the chart and they say, oh, all of those are more than five. No, no, no. Remember, those are all observations. So don't look at those numbers. I mean, those numbers are needed, but the actual condition results in the expected counts all being five or more. So those are okay, but we got to make sure we check the expected counts first. All right. So now let's actually go and do our work. And um, that work is all about finding our chi squared. Now, remember how do you got to find a chi squared, right? Chi squared is a really easy formula. It's the observed value minus the expected value squared, all divided by the um, expected value. Okay, observed minus expected squared divided by the expected. Now, all of the values in this chart are the. Um, observes, right? So these eight numbers in the chart are the observed values. So we just have to now find the expected values. And I'll walk you through it and then I'll teach you a little trick that makes it simple, right? All right, so here's the idea, right? For example, uh, 48 divided by 236, or about 20% of toys are green. And I should see that same 20% amongst the males and females. So I would take the 116 males and times it by 20% to get the expected males there. Take the 120 females, times it by 20% to get the expected greens. But, you know, that's kind of rounding, so it's not exactly 20%. It's pretty close, though. So I don't want to do any rounding. So the easy way to get your expected is to think row total times column total divided by grand total. So so for example, females that like green, the expected should be found by taking the row total, 120, times the column total, 48, divided by the grand total, 236, and I get 24.41. I'm going to change the size of my brush here so it's a little bit small so I can fit that in there because it gets kind of messy. 24.41. Okay, now for the guys, the males that like green, again, row total, 116, um, times uh, column total, 48, divided by grand total, 236, I get 23.59. 23.59. And I'm going to repeat this for all the colors. So this does take a little bit of time, but most of it's on the calculator. And I like just kind of writing it in the chart there, keeping all my work nice and organized. That way my observes and my expecteds are right next to each other. All right, so yellow, 120 times 27 divided by 236 is 13.73. And for the males, 116 times 27 divided by 236. And make sure that you're typing this thing correctly. 116 times 27 divided by 236, 13.27. And now blue, 120 times 58 is the column total divided by 236, 29.49. 
And uh, it is important to use the decimals as well because you definitely don't want to, um, you know, it's okay to have expected values with decimals or it's okay for your expecteds to be decimals. I'm running everything in two decimal places. That should be pretty good for accuracy. All right, males blue, 116 column total times 48 for the column total divided by 236, 28.58. And now for red, let's see here, 120 times column total, 103, divided by 236, 52.37. And males, let's see here, 116 times 103, divided by 236, and I get 50.638. Now what I kind of like to do is just kind of look at these and see if any of them are like eye-poppingly off. And as I look across, um, I mean, not really, maybe yellow, um, female, 18 observed, 13.73 expected. That's a little bit off. I mean, red's not really that far off. I mean, again, a little bit, but none of them are like, I mean, big time off. And that kind of starts to tip me off. That, you know, these numbers aren't perfect. Maybe maybe they're not that bad. But again, you never know. That's why you got to do the chi-squared process here. All right, so now I actually got to go get my chi-squared. So again, not only do you stop there and um, get all of your expecteds, which now I can officially check off that third condition. All the expected values in purple there are larger than five or five or larger. Now I got to go get all my chi-squareds. I like to use the formula exactly written with the parentheses. And I type it all in at once. So, for example, female red. I'll do observe 48 minus 52.37 in parentheses, squared on the outside, divided by the 52.37. Do it all at once on your calculator using parentheses. makes it real simple to type in, and you get a chi-squared of 0.36. I'm also going to round all of these to two decimals. Now, for males red, 55 minus 50.63 squared divided by 50.63. And check that you type that in right, and I get 0.38. So really take the time to use your calculator. I, again, I like to do it all at once, just using the parentheses. It's really not that bad. Just make sure that squares on the outside of those parentheses on top. So blue, 24 minus 29.49 squared divided by the 29.49. And I get 1.02. And the uh, blue f uh, males now, so 34 minus 28.58 squared divided by 28.58. Five eight, and I get 1.03. So remember, the grand total chi-squared is the sum. That's why I'm adding all these up slowly here. All right, yellow, observe 18 minus 13.73 squared divided by 13.73. And if you get all this, you're like, oh, I'm tired of listening to them go through all these, then go ahead and just kind of fast forward a little bit. That's fine. 1.33. But it is, you know, when you're first learning this, it's important to really take the time to kind of do it along with me so you truly understand what's happening here. All right, and now I got 1.37 for yellow males. And let's move on to the final category here of green. So for females, again, that's 30 observed, minus 24.41 expected squared, divided by 24.41, and I get 1.28. And one more to go here, one more to go. All right, males green, 18 observed, minus 23.59 expected squared. Make sure that squares on the outside of that parenthesis, please. Divided by the 23.59 expected, and I get 1.32. All right, now I'm going to add all these together. So on my calculator, 0.36 plus 0.38 plus 1.02 plus 1.03 plus 1.33 plus 1.37 plus 1.28 plus 1.32. I really take the time to make sure I typed all those in right. Last thing you want to do is do all the work right, but then type one into your calculator wrong and mess everything up. Uh, 0 0.36, 0 0.38, 1.02, 1.03, 1.33, 1.28, 1 1.32. And I'm getting a chi-squared total of 8.09. All right, now it's time for my p-value, because your p-value is really what's going to help you get your final result here. Okay, um, so to get my p-value, I'm going to use my TI-84. I'm going to use chi-squared CDF, and I'm going to do 8.09 to 99, comma. Now for the degrees of freedom. All right, on the left side, we have two um, two categories. That's one degree of freedom on the left side. Categories minus one. Across the top, I got four categories. Minus one is three degrees of freedom. And what you do is you do um, the degrees of freedom across the top times the degrees of freedom across the left. So three times one is three total degrees 
degrees of freedom. And that's the formula for degrees of freedom with chi-squared chart here. So it's categories minus one, three across the top, categories minus one, one across the left, and multiply those together. So now when I go and get my chi-squared CDF here, 8.09, comma 99, comma three degrees of freedom, and I get 0.0442. So my p-value is 0 0.04. Now remember real quick what a p-value is. It's the probability of your sample occurring or more extreme, given that the null is true. So assuming that these are independent, um, seeing these numbers is um, has about a four, almost five percent, you know, four point four two percent chance of occurring. So you know, now it's our job to make a conclusion. I mean, that's not totally unlikely. It all depends, right? So now we got to actually make our conclusion, and all conclusions are based on that p-value, right? So what alpha do we want to choose? Well, when this problem, it actually can make kind of a difference. Typically, I like to use an alpha of 0.01, meaning anything under 1% is significant. So since 0.0442 is actually greater than my um, alpha or my significance level, this is actually not significant. Now, what does that mean in context? Well, when something is not significant, we're going to fail to reject the null. Fail to reject the null. Okay, what we're saying is that, you know what, these numbers are just not that far off to claim that there is an association. Yes, they're not all perfect, they don't all match up, observes and expected, but none of them are so far off that we can claim that there's definitely an association. So that's what we're going to do with this. Again, if I'm using an alpha level of 0.01, I'm going to fail to reject the null. There is no evidence, at least no significant evidence, that there is an association between color of toy chosen, given that little context here, and gender, right? So again, the, the p-value is an interesting one because uh, we'll talk in one second about that, but it, you know, it's not, again, if I'm going to use an alpha of 0.01, it's not lower, so that means it's not significant, so we're going to fail to reject it all. Basically, our numbers aren't perfect, but there's just not enough solid evidence to really say, oh my god, blue is so much more favored by males or females. It's just, we don't have enough evidence of that. Now, to be honest, you know, you have the the um, the authority in some problems to choose your alpha. So if you would have chosen an alpha of 0.05, you would have actually said that this is significant because 0.04. 0.42 is less than 0.05. So if you would actually want to choose an alpha of, of 0.05, you could actually reject the null and claim that there is enough evidence of an association. And that's kind of the beauty in choosing your own alpha. And that's kind of what happens when you get one of these middle of the road p-values like 0.0442. See, we love p-values that are really, really small because that makes it easy to reject the null. We love p-values that are really, really big because that makes it easy to fail to reject the null. But in this case, it could go either way depending. But I like to use alpha level of 0.01. So that's why I would fail to reject an all, and there's just not enough solid, significant evidence to claim that there is an association. So hopefully this was a pretty simple video, and hopefully you remember the, the four major steps of a test, and now we're just getting this idea of how to test this with independence between two categorical variables.